sorry we lost 10 minutes of our teaching so uh, you'll have a solid understanding about your purpose recognize your calling and start developing and using your gifts the sooner you begin to function and flow in the gifts that god has given you and in your calling things get better so part one there are three parts in this course part one is dealing with our purpose discovering our purpose part two will be discovering our calling and part three will be discovering and identifying our gifts why study about purpose what is the reason during this pandemic you know why do we take this course it's very important there are seven reasons why we need to study on purpose purpose gives us a reason to live when we get out of bed in the morning if there's no purpose to live for then there is no reason to wake up i know many people drag themselves out of bed they are not happy to go to the job they're doing they are not happy to go to the workplace because they know in their heart that is not what they are supposed to be doing but they are forced to do it because they have to make a living that's not the way to live life on the earth we're supposed to be living on purpose god sent each of us with a definite purpose and assignment to this planet earth nobody arrived on this planet without a purpose and without an assignment doesn't matter which part of the world you were born what kind of circumstances you were born no life arrived on this planet without a definite purpose and assignment so i want to i want to guarantee you you are here for a specific reason and god sent you here for such a time as this especially what is happening in the world today you know many people think this is the end of the world at the conference there was a prophet who said this is not the end of the world but this is the end of the world as we know it things have changed and will continue to change and the holy spirit gave me another line to add to it this is also the end of the church system as we knew it so please don't wait to go back to what was normal or what was used to be it is gone change have happened shift have happened church system this is not the end of the church this is not the end of the world is the end of the world and the church as we knew it so we have to explore what god is doing on this planet earth today and what is our role in it so life supposed to be lived on purpose and the second reason why we study why we should study about purpose is because purpose unlocks the key to our provision what makes us go to work what makes us uh went to college for five years trying to make a living we want to make some money to provide for us for our family pay for the pay the bills that's what makes us but that's not the way to live your purpose is the key that unlocks your provision when god releases a purpose he also releases resources to fulfill that purpose we saw that in the last course those who took the first course when god created adam god was faithful to provide for adam whatever he needed to fulfill his assignment adam didn't ask god for anything that's what jesus said do not worry about what you're going to eat what you're going to wear where you're going to live what you're going to drink your heavenly father knows that you need of those things wow <laughs> so adam's father heavenly father adam was the son of god his father knew what adam would need to fulfill that assignment so your provision 
my kingdom family across the globe is attached to your purpose. The third reason why we should study about purpose, purpose gives us significance. Everybody wants to feel significant on this planet Earth. Why people dare to do crazy things. And we see that on television, on social media. People will do anything. Why they're doing is because they want to feel significant. They want to feel important. They want, to, they want others to notice them. But what gives us significance is simply fulfill and walk in our purpose that will bring significance to our life. You don't have to look for significance. It will come to us when we fulfill our significance. David killed the giant. He was not looking for it, but it came to him. And when he killed that giant, significance came. He just walked in his calling. He just fulfilled his assignment. When you walk in your calling, fulfill the assignment God has given it to you, significance is part of it. Purpose gives us fulfillment. Doesn't matter how much money you make, what kind of house you live, what you do with your life, unless we are doing what we were born to do, we will feel like there is something missing deep down in our heart. What is it? That's the purpose. That's your purpose calling out for attention. That's why people who are successful based on the worldly standard, they are not happy. They are Many commit suicide, depended on substance of abuse. Why? Because they're not happy. They're not feeling fulfilled. What gives us fulfillment? Fulfilling our purpose. The fifth reason why we should study about purpose, purpose unleashes God's favor. Ooh, I love God's favor. The moment you step out or step into your purpose. God is more interested in you to fulfill your purpose than you are interested in because it helps his kingdom. That's why he sent us here. So when he notices an individual on the earth stepping into their God-given purpose, it automatically unleashes his favor upon that person. And we see that throughout the Bible. One day of favor, one moment of God's favor is worth a hundred years of labor. One moment of God's favor can take us to places where our education cannot or whatever effort we put into will not take us. One moment of favor like Joseph, Esther, Daniel. We see these people, Peter, a fisherman. One day he was a fisherman, the next day he was enrolled by God Almighty to be the number one apostle in his team of establishing his ecclesia on this planet Earth. It unleashed God's favor. And until the day before, Peter was living in lack. He couldn't catch any fish. But the moment he found Jesus, he met Jesus, or he had an encounter with Jesus, it, it unleashed his assignment, his kingdom assignment or his calling. And God's favor was his, on his side. The sixth reason, purpose is the reason God sent you to this planet Earth. I mentioned it early. If you are alive on this planet Earth, that means there's a reason. Oh, I want to say that again. If you're alive and breathing today, that means God has a reason for you to be here. You are not an accident. You are not unwanted. You are not rejected. God has a very specific plan and, and an assignment for you. So that is the reason he sent us here. Why we are alive, why we were not born 100 years ago or during Moses' time, or 100 years from now, the reason we are alive here, because there was a specific thing God saw on this planet Earth to be done. And God said, 
I am going to send Joyce to do it. I am going to send Rachel to do it with a specific calling and gifts. I am going to send Daniel. I am going to send Michelle. I am going to send Abraham John. Here I am sitting and teaching about purpose, calling, and gifts. He said, this guy needed right now on this planet Earth because people are confused because of what is happening on the Earth. Thank God. God for this pandemic. If this pandemic wasn't here, I, would, I wouldn't be sitting here and teaching this. <laughs> Our God is amazing. My Lord, my God. And rest of you, even if I didn't say your name, I can't see everybody on my screen. And each of you are sent here with a specific reason. If you are alive and breathing, God needs you and he has a purpose and he has a plan. Purpose is the key to recognizing your calling. So in God's kingdom, he establishes purpose first. Anytime God creates something, he defines its purpose first. Not talking about the gifts. No, that's what happened in the church. We began to talk about the gifts. Everybody ran after the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Then they threw the Holy Spirit out of the window. They want the gifts, but they don't want the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Holy Spirit is much bigger than his gifts. And we will learn all those during this course. So just hold on and put your seatbelt on. We are going to take, take a ride. We are going to go for a ride. The entire course is built on one of God's eternal purposes. And we touched on in the first course, but I want to reemphasize this here. What is that God's eternal purpose? There are seven God's eternal purposes from which he will never back down. Doesn't matter who says what, which party is ruling United States or your country. God's eternal purpose means there's no change to it. Whether, whether man falls, rise up, government changes, kingdoms disappears, empires vanishes from the earth. God's purpose will never change. So one of that God's eternal purpose is everything God created has a purpose, a place, and a function built in to fulfill that purpose. So please take that sentence into your heart forever. Don't lose that. That is very important in this course that we are learning. Everything God created has a purpose, a place, and a built-in function to fulfill that purpose. Sometimes we confuse between purpose and function. And we are going to learn about that. What is the difference between purpose and function? Function is there to fulfill, to help us fulfill the purpose. Eating is our function, but that's not our purpose, right? <laughs> Sleeping is our purpose. No, it's, it's our function. <laughs> it's part of our function, but that's not our purpose. Whatever else we do, but we had to discover our purpose, then God gave us or a built-in function. And we are going to learn about different creatures that God has created, how they function to fulfill that purpose. But majority of the time, we are so stuck in functioning, we are not fulfilling our purpose because our purpose has been stolen from us by the enemy and by the religious spirit. So we are going to check and see the purpose of creation from Genesis chapter 1. We are going to go one by one, and I'm going to highlight certain things that God has created and why he created it. Because as I said earlier, when God creates something, he defines its purpose right there. He doesn't wait thousand years. He doesn't wait three days later to tell what and why he's creating something. The moment he creates something, sometime before he creates, he would tell, this is why I'm creating it. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1.1, we are so familiar. Heaven was created for his throne. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1 says, heaven is his throne. That is God's throne. Leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> it 
There is another guy who tried to take over God's throne. Do you know who that is in the Bible? There's another, another creature who tried to take over God's throne and, and what happened to him as a result. So anybody who tried to take over God's throne will be cast down. <laughs> and we'll go into that more later. So thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Psalm 115 verse 16 says, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. That is his property. That's where he lives. That is his house, his throne. But the earth he has given to the devil and his demons. No, I'm just misreading. No, that's not what the Bible says. That's what I was taught in church. This earth is not your home. This world is not yours. It belongs to the devil. No, that's a lie. In Jesus' name, I rebuke and I destroy that lie. The earth has, he has given to the children of man. Any children of men listening to me today? This earth belongs to you and I. So it is time to receive our inheritance, the gift that God gave to us. Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 5, Blessed, blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. So the earth was given to the children of men to be inhabited and to rule. Isaiah 45 verse 18 says, For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. But majority of this planet earth remain uninhabited. We think there's so many people or some people think or some billionaires think there is too many people on the earth. They have to get rid of some people. No, we have congested cities. There are new cities that needs to be built. I prophesy, I wrote in my book, there are kingdom cities that is going to be built on this planet earth. The best cities that you'll ever see is at to be built and there is plenty of room for all of us on this planet earth and there is plenty of water you know there's another challenge that people think oh there's not enough water they just found a fresh water ocean under the atlantic ocean did you hear that in the news there's another fresh water ocean under the atlantic ocean <laughs> there's plenty of water for this planet earth there's plenty of land for everyone who is alive here. So when God creates something, he defines his purpose, as I mentioned. So God created the light to divide and to rule over darkness. That is the purpose of the light, to divide and to rule over darkness. Why darkness is ruling in our cities, in our nations, in our world? Because the light is absent when light is absent darkness rule you and i are the light of this world not light of heaven why there is darkness ruling in our cities in our governments educational systems of this world because the light is absent from there you and I are the light of this world and the salt of the earth. When we are absent from these spheres of life, darkness walks in and takes over. Any gap, any space that we live, vacuum, empty, without light, darkness will rule that area. Oh, my Lord, my God, I feel the grace of God here. God created the dry land to be the earth. He called the dry land earth. That is the purpose of the dry land, to be the earth. God created the firmament to divide the waters from the waters. Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. He gathered the waters in one place and called it sea. 
God created grass, herbs that yield seeds and fruit trees for food. Mankind and animals were vegans in the beginning, before the fall. They only ate vegetarian stuff, food. He created the sun. Let it be for signs, seasons, and for days and years, and let it be for lights to rule the day. When he created the sun, God said, let it rule the day. Then he put that sun in a particular place in the sky. And that sun is still doing what God created it to do in Genesis. Never took a break, even though the days we cannot, we couldn't see the sun, that doesn't mean he's not there. He's doing what he was created to do. Still doing it today. Whatever God created in Genesis, those things are doing what he created them to do. Then God built in a function within that sun, a chemical reaction to produce the heat and light. The sun doesn't need to go anywhere to fulfill its purpose. Whatever is needed was built in to that sun. That is the beauty of creation. We are going to learn about that. When we learn about our purpose, we will see God built into us. And if the sun moves away from the earth, the earth will freeze. But if the sun leaves its place and come closer to the earth, the earth will burn up. So everything God created has a purpose, a place, and a function built in to fulfill that purpose. He created the moon to rule the night. And the moon is still shining at night. And the stars, he set them in the firmament of the heavens. That is the place they belong. Everything God created has a purpose and a place and a function built in. That is a very key. I want to take I want, to, I want you to take that home with you today. And there's another one that I want you to take home. We are going to come to that in a minute. He created the living creatures in the waters. The most popular one is fish. God created the fish and built in a function to fulfill that purpose. What is the purpose of the fish? To swim in the water. And where is the place the fish belong? It's in the water. What if a fish decides, I'm tired of this water, I'm going to get out of here and go and climb tree like a, try to climb a tree like a monkey. What would happen to that fish if it leaves the place where God put it? That fish will die. And what if that fish wakes up in the morning and sings, this water is not my home. I'm going to fly away, oh glory. The rest of the fish will look at that fish and say, he has gone little cuckoo. <laughs> and that's what we have been doing. We have been singing, this world is not my home. This is your home. He created the birds to fly. Oh, let me talk about the fish a little more because fish is my favorite food. <laughs> I grew up by the water when I was a kid. Man, so if you invite me, <laughs> If you invite me to your home for a dinner, now you know what you cook for. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is the secret I wanted to capture. See, God created the fish to swim. And the secret is the fish doesn't go to school to learn how to swim. Why? Because whatever that fish needs to fulfill that purpose was built into that fish by God. God Almighty. Woo! He's an amazing God. A bird doesn't go to school to learn how to fly. Why? Because that flight was built into that bird by God. So everything God created, God built in the ability to fulfill that purpose. He created the living creatures from the earth. And they are still in the jungle. Every dog has the same purpose. What's the purpose of a dog? To bark. As soon as somebody comes at the door at my house, guess who is running after barking? <laughs> it's the dog. 
Doesn't matter how many times I tell that dog not to bark, the next time when he hears that doorbell, whoo, here he goes. <laughs> bow, bow, bow. Because that's why God created that dog for, to bark. You cannot stop it. And the dogs don't go to school to learn to bark. Every monkey has the same purpose, which is to climb trees. If a monkey is not climbing trees, that means there's something wrong. There's, somebody has done some genetic modification to that monkey. Every fish has the same purpose, which is to swim, but there are different kinds and sizes of fish. There are different kinds of dogs and sizes of dogs and different kinds of monkeys. Every bird has the same purpose, which is to fly. There are different kinds and colors of birds that God has created because God is a God of variety and creativity. They don't go to school to learn about their purpose. Purpose is supposed to be natural. I want you to capture that, please. Purpose supposed to be natural. Please write that down. I want you to capture that one sentence. The, the second, the first one was everything God created has a purpose, a place, and a function to fulfill that purpose. Second truth, foundational truth is purpose supposed to be natural. That's what I said. Birds, dogs, they don't go to school. What comes to you naturally? And we are going to spend a few minutes on that as we learn. So I have a video here that I wanted to watch. It's about a sea turtle. And I wanted to watch this turtle, what it does as soon as it came, came out of its eggshell. Just born, baby sea turtle. And watch what it does with its life as soon as it's born to show you purpose is supposed to be natural. Amen. How does that little turtle know which direction it's supposed to travel as soon as it, as soon as it came out of that little eggshell? Because purpose and the place and the function to fulfill that purpose was built in by God Almighty when he created something. That's the way God functions. That is the way his kingdom operates. So the sun rises every morning, whether we like it or not, whether we pray or not, that sun is going to come up in the morning and it is going to do it, its job, what it created for until the day God says enough, stop it. <laughs> then it will stop. Until then, it will continue to do it. The moon and stars are still in the sky. It's doing what God appointed to do in Genesis 1, seasons, years, and times on the earth. Days, seasons, and years still happen. We are in the summer. We are complaining, not complaining, talking about the heat of the summer everywhere. It's warm. 
You know, we had more days in the 90s in Denver, Colorado than I don't know how many years. The birds are still flying. Did the birds take a break because Adam fell? God told the birds, he can't fly anymore because Adam fell and disobeyed and he had to wait until the millennial reign for the birds to fly. No, God did not say that. Everything God created is still doing what it was created for. The fish are still in the water. They are swimming. Trees and plants are growing in the fields. And thank God for that because we have food to eat. Animals are still on the earth. The lion is still the king of the jungle. I went to Kenya and a friend of mine took me to a, a natural habitat of wild animals called Masai Mara. It's an amazing place. Uh, when I went there, I saw almost all wild animals, including lion, um, cheetahs, and giraffes, and hippos, and oh my goodness, that was. So the lion is still the king of the jungle. I tried to tell the lion, you cannot be the king of the jungle because Adam fell. Do you know what he did? He looked at me like as I'm his lunch, nest lunch. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They are still the, the, the king of the jungle, the lion, because that's why God created them. Whatever God spoke over his creation is still true today, and they're doing what he created them to do, except one group of people. Who is that group of people who defies his purpose? Every time I try to tell them, they try to fight. And I'm not going to mention that group here. We'll find out later. So what is the purpose of mankind? Why did God create us? How did he create us? And what did he tell mankind to do? When he created the fish, he told them to swim in the water. When he created the birds, he told them to fly. And they're still flying. And when he created the animals, he told them to be in the field. And they're still roaming and doing what they're created to do. Then at the end, on the sixth day, God created mankind. And this is what he said. Let us create man in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. This is how and why God created you and I. When God creates something, he defines his purpose. He doesn't wait 2,000 years to tell us what we're supposed to do. We don't need to add anything to, to it. We don't need to assume anything what God did not say. He makes it clear and simple about why he is creating something and how. So when he created the rest of the creation, he said, let there be light. Let there be fish in the waters. Let there be birds in the air. But when he created mankind, do you know what he did? He didn't speak, let there be. He spoke to himself. He said, let us make man. Let us pull man out of ourselves. In our image, and our likeness. We are supposed to function like God functions because we are created in his image and likeness. If you want to know who you are, look at God and study about him. Do you want to know how to function on this planet earth? Learn how God functions because you and I came out of him. What God is in heaven we are on the earth. We are supposed to be on the earth. What God is doing in heaven, we're supposed to be doing that down here on the earth. It's that simple. That's what theology is supposed to do for us. Theology means the study of God. Why we study about God? To know about ourselves. If you don't know God, we don't know who we are. If you don't know God, we don't know who made us, why we are here, why he sent us here. So 
we came from God. We are like God on this planet Earth with a small g. And what did he tell them? I wanted to capture another powerful principle, foundational truth. When God created us, he included himself. He didn't say, let there be. He said, let us make man. He included himself in the creating part. But the important thing I wanted to focus is he, he did not include himself when he designated the rulership over the earth. He said, let them have dominion. Dominion means to rule. And we'll learn more in detail. Actually, two classes is about dominion, two lessons. So God did not include himself in the dominion or rulership of the earth. He said, let them, who is them? Mankind, male and female included, combined. He said, let them do whatever they want to do on this planet earth. That's when I have a problem when people say, God is in control, brother. Don't worry what's happening on the earth. God is control. No, he is not in control. He gave the control to you and I to decide what needs to happen on this earth and what should not happen on the earth. Who brushed our hair this morning? Did God do it for us? Or did Abraham John come to my hair? Who is in control of my hair? <laughs> you know, Jesus knows even a little hair that falls on the ground. But to keep it, I had a haircut yesterday. God did not cut my hair. I had to go to a hairdresser to cut my hair. Who is in control? See, God has given us designated right to rule this delegated, actually, delegated authority to rule this planet. That is called dominion. 99% of the time, what happens on the earth? in our life is our choice but god is sovereign that's the question comes abraham isn't isn't god sovereign yes he is that's why he gave us the right to rule because he's a sovereign king he delegated the right to rule this planet to mankind remember psalm 115 verse 16 heavens even the heavens belongs to the lord but the earth, he gave it to the children of man. And we will go into more detail. This is just an introduction of this entire course. So don't jump into any conclusion right now. There's more to come. All your questions will be answered. So this is the purpose statement of mankind given to us by God our created how we were made created and what he told us to do and he never changed his mind because adam fell or adam didn't fall no just like the birds are still flying the fish is still swimming god did not change his mind concerning our purpose just because adam fell which is god's eternal purpose he never changes his mind so this single verse, my dear brothers and sisters, is hidden the three age-old questions people ask. Every philosopher, every great man and woman on this planet Earth try to answer these questions. Those three questions are, who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? Knowing every individual will ask that question. Do you know what God did? He answered those questions in the first chapter of the Bible. How can God make more easier than that life on the earth? <laughs> the first chapter itself, God answered those three questions. Who am I has to do with my identity. If there is a crisis on this planet earth, is identity crisis. People doesn't know who they are. How did God answer that? God said, I'm creating man in our image 
in our likeness that is my identity i am just like my daddy i'm just like my father the image and likeness of god we are the image bearers of god and we are like god that's my identity the second question is where did i come from my source that's the second question people ask we are confused by our school system they taught us man came from monkey or some bacteria or some explosion out there where is our source and i already mentioned that god said let us create man in our image we came from god god spoke to himself when he created us the third question is why am i here why am i here has to do with purpose what is purpose purpose is the original intent and purpose is the reason for existence that is purpose why am i here so we have three dimensions to our identity because man is made of three parts spirit soul and body all those three parts have a unique separate identity our spirit man is created in the image and likeness of god that is the identity of our spirit god doesn't look like you and i physically he he doesn't have a physical body he is a spirit so in the spirit we are created in his image and likeness just like him and our body oops is has an identity we are either male or female that's the identity of our gender god created male and female that is god's design that's not a mistake female is not a mistake male is not a mistake male doesn't need to act like a female female doesn't need to act like a male they are different they have different roles and god created them for a purpose and that's the way he created them he didn't create adam and steve or what is the identity of our soul our mind we have the mind of christ that is the identity of our soul part our mind supposed to think like christ thinks how does it think when we combine the entire body of christ we have the full mind and manifestation of christ and his creativity on this planet earth so the question is who is ruling on the earth today mankind right we may say devil well the devil is ruling because we gave him the right to rule but even the devil cannot rule this planet without mankind partnering with him the only creature oh this is so powerful i wanted to capture this the only creation that god gave the right to rule this planet earth is mankind god never gave the right of rulership to satan or to any demons or to any other creature the only creation that received the right from god almighty to rule this planet earth is mankind and god is looking for partners on the earth to accomplish his purpose devil also is looking for partners to accomplish his will on the earth now the question is who with whom do we partner to accomplish their purpose and we will come to that later
So if mankind is ruling this planet, I hope Denmark is ruled by mankind. The president, the prime minister in India, uh, where else, Canada, um, somebody just joined from Liberia, my brother Sexus from Liberia. Mankind is ruling. President Trump is the president of United States. Doesn't matter whatever you say about him, he's the president. He's the one who's the Congress ruling this country. Who told them to rule? Who gave them the right? It is natural purpose, supposed to be natural. That's why we talk about government. Every Christian, every believer, whether they what they believe about politics or government, they talk about it. Why we talk about it if we don't like it? Because that's the way God designed it. We cannot live without a government. We cannot function without a system of government, whether it is democratic, socialist, communist, whatever. How did they know they're supposed to rule? How does this, even heathens who doesn't believe in God or who believes in millions of gods, they know they were created to rule this planet. Even the atheist who doesn't believe in God, they know they're supposed to take care of this planet and rule it. How do they know that? Purpose is natural. Everybody say this after me. Purpose supposed to be natural. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out our purpose. <laughs> it is natural. How come it is hidden from us? Most Christians, most believers around the world, they said government is, belongs to the devil. Politics is evil. We are not supposed to be ruling. We are not supposed to be getting involved in government or politics. It's all evil. Who told you that? We are going to find out who told us that. The purpose of humans. God created mankind to have dominion. What is dominion? Delegated authority or the right to rule. Dominion is part of the birthright of every individual who is born on this planet Earth. Don't let the enemy steal and deceive your birthright. Whew, that's so powerful. I want to say that again. Don't let the enemy lie, deceive, steal your birthright that God gave to you as a human being. You don't need to speak in tongues to have this birthright. You don't need to be part of a particular church to live in this birthright. Just being born as a human. I want to say that again. Just being born as a human. You came with the birthright to rule this planet Earth. Somebody say amen. And now you consider the damage religious spirit has brought into our mind and the way of thinking for hundreds of years. The damage and the defect religious spirit has inflicted upon Christians is unfathomable. And we are going to learn how do we rule? How does dominion look like to me personally? That's why you're here in this course. Psalms 8 verse 6 says, You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. How many things did God put under our feet? All things. Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Jesus said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. New Testament. Old Testament says the same thing. And I'm going to give you plenty of scriptures from old and new, fulfilling our purpose 
the entire human race has the same purpose. That is the another truth I wanted to capture. Because when I was growing up in church, Bible schools here, there, you know, this great preachers will come and tell us, you know, Abraham, John has a purpose. Daniel has a different purpose. Venti has a different purpose. Then Michelle has something else. No. Every human being combined has the same purpose, which is to rule. Every bird has the same purpose, which is to fly. But there are different kinds of birds. Every fish has combined as the same purpose, but there are different kinds and sizes of fish. But human being, mankind, collectively combined as only one purpose, single purpose, which is to rule this planet Earth. But the truth is, we won't all rule the same way. Each to fulfill that purpose that we have, each one of us are called to do something different and unique. That is the second part of this course, how to discover what you're called to do. So human being combined together, all of us, same purpose, which is to rule, have dominion, to manage, to take care of this earth. But we want all rule the same way. David was called to be a king. Moses was called to be a deliverer. Paul was called to be an apostle, but they all had the same purpose, but callings, they were different. Then to fulfill that calling, God gives us gifts. Each one of us has gifts and the potential to develop skills to fulfill that calling. Each one of us has. Nobody arrived on this planet without a gift or at least the potential to develop a skill. Every individual, even people without the limbs they were born, they have the potential. And we are going to see in this course. We will never exhaust our full potential, regardless of how much we achieve and how long we live. There's always more left. The more you demand the potential that God has deposited in us, the more it manifests. But it takes time, it takes effort, and it takes hard work. Somebody say hard work. Problem with most Christians, they don't want to do any hard work. They're waiting for a miracle. They want God to do the exercise for them. They don't want to go to the gym and do exercise. They want Jesus to do exercise for them so they can have a healthy body. It's not going to happen. The miracle mentality handicapped church believers. They don't want to work hard. They don't want to put any demand to the potential God put them. They're just waiting on God. Pray for me, brother. I need a miracle. Miracles are good to get us out of trouble and crisis. But we were not created to live in miracles. We were created to live in a kingdom. Oh, this is so powerful. Purpose is the big why. Calling is the big what. Purpose gives you, why am I here? Calling tells you, what are you supposed to be doing with your life? If somebody comes and tell you, pray for me, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. That means they don't know what they are called to do. But if somebody comes and tell us, brother, pray for me, I don't know why I'm here. They're talking about their purpose. They may not recognize it that way, but that's what they mean. Their spirit man is giving you a clue. And gifts and skills are the big how. How are you going to do this? Your gifts and the skills that God given you or you developed by God's grace is the clue on how you're going to fulfill that calling to fulfill your purpose. So we are going to personalize our purpose statement today and end today's lesson by God's grace. I have taken Genesis 1.26 and we are going to put our name where he said, God said, let us make man 
We are going to put Abraham John there, and you put your name there. Genesis 1.26 says, Then God said, Let us make Abraham John in our image according to your likeness, and let Abraham John have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So we are going to read this together personalized. Are you ready? When I say one, two, three, you read it and put your name where you see that blank spot. One, two, three, let's do it. Then God said, let us make Abraham John in our image according to your likeness and let Abraham John have dominion over the fish of the sea or the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. That's our purpose statement. Wow, that was powerful. <laughs> so we will end our lesson today here. We'll pick back up. My goodness, this is going to be more exciting or to get more exciting next week because we are going to explore what dominion means to each of us. How do we rule? There are 12 definitions of dominion because it's a Hebrew compound word. Because in the Hebrew language, one word is an encyclopedia. And I'm not kidding. One Hebrew word in the Bible, in Genesis, especially Genesis 1 and 2, it's enough to make an encyclopedia. One stroke in Hebrew language, it means something. When we say dominion, we say rule. That's not what in Hebrew it means. It, it means whole spectrum of things. And we are going to explore that next week, if God willing. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you are blessed, challenged, stretched, and, uh, <laughs> and feeling overwhelmed. Oh my goodness, how come I didn't know this before? See, see, see when people tell me, oh Abraham, this is so deep. This is not deep stuff. This is Sunday school stuff. We should have been taught this in Sunday school, but we were not. This is the simple, basic stuff we should be teaching our children from day one, from they were born. That's what the Jewish people do to their children. They teach from Genesis. They don't teach, Jesus loves me, this I know, or God so loved the world. They teach about purpose first, and identity and their calling and their gifts, then they release them to the world to go and influence. So now is the time for questions, comments, and feedback. So if you have a question regarding anything I shared today, you're free to ask, comment, and feedback. I am not guaranteed I know all the answers, but I know somebody who knows all the answers. Venti right there. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> The Holy Spirit, <laughs> the Holy Spirit knows all the answers and we will find out from him. So if you have a question, please show me your hand. I will unmute your microphone or a comment or a feedback uh, regarding what you heard. And please don't be shy <laughs> to ask questions or say, Oh my goodness, that makes me nervous. No. <laughs> okay, I'll just say I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Wendy, help me out here. <laughs> uh, you're fun to receive from and listen to, and of course, you know, I'm cheering on from the Spirit because it just is all very confirming, and, and we know it in our Holy Spirit, and I just wanted to encourage others that as you hear what Abraham is teaching, you can hear that it's the Holy Spirit speaking, and you just bring everything into your spirit, man, and let it resonate. And those things that confirm with you, then you then you carry those forward. So we have the Holy Spirit with us, and, and he, uh, the Holy Spirit guides us to all truth. So those things you're not sure of, or if you heard something new, then just continue to process them, and, and God will sort them out with you. So I just wanted to encourage you and thank uh, Abraham for his great teaching. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy, for that comment. Uh, Brother Praveen. Uh, please unmute there. 
on your go ahead uh, abram you are telling that we are here to rule domain uh on the god's creation mm -hmm. like as for as uh, my knowledge like uh, ruling means like we are be like uh, mla mp's president or something we do something and we uh, uh, take uh, king david he ruled judah and he has an army and all those things like right? see uh, i want to understand what is ruling yeah that's what the next class is about how what is this dominion means how do how each one of us will rule we are not all called to be presidents prime ministers and governors and mayors but each of us are called created by god to rule over at least one area or aspect of life so king uh, david so we king rule david. i'm sorry go ahead go no go ahead uh you mean to say that we rule uh, our fellow uh, humans or we rule birds uh, lions and plants and the uh, nature that we rule on them or like we rule uh, on fellow on our fellow humans what did god say in genesis 126 he said let them that's what i am confused like he said it's here over all the earth so dominion means 12 things rule govern manage maximize and we are going to learn that next week okay okay dominion is not domination we don't dominate other people we are not here to tell others what to do with their life we are here to manifest god's glory and his image and his likeness and when we do that it creates an hunger in other people's lives to get to know what you have because we are all connected in god's kingdom i can't function without you you need me and i need you that's the way it works but we have this sometime we inherited and not not in this culture at least in our some different cultures in you know, a ruling over people that is that is not what i'm talking about here how do we rule as god rules like jesus rules how does jesus rules his kingdom he is not about controlling people he gives us freedom to make the choice then he tells us the consequences of our choice so that is the way the kingdom of god is being ruled by our king jesus so we will explore that more in the next lessons when we study the definitions of dominion is it okay okay yes sir okay uh anybody else have a question comment just a second let me get my oh i see michelle's hand michelle please and me yes abraham when you were talking about the fish and how the purpose it came alive in my spirit i've been looking for my purpose all these years and i need to look on the inside not on the outside um it was just something that uh when you were talking about the fish was born with its purpose we all have our purpose it just it came alive in my spirit thank you oh you're welcome thank you purpose supposed to be natural but to develop gifts it takes time you know to flow in the gifts to develop a skill it can take time and it will take time but purpose supposed to be natural but then he put the potential in us to put a demand and maximize it for his kingdom assignment that's the way god works his kingdom economy works remember that jesus gave the five talents to one two and one then he said what go and invest go and multiply increase whatever god gives to us when he 
receive it back, he wants it in a better shape, multiplied and increased. Otherwise he won't be happy. So if, if God gave us a beautiful earth and we give it back to him a messed up one, we better get ready. <laughs> You know, there's a parable that Jesus gave about the vineyard that he gave a noble man, went to a far country to receive a kingdom and he gave his servants his land, his property, and he said, manage it for me. And after a long time, he's back to receive his reward. And this guy said, we don't want you to rule over us. They killed some of his servants. Then he sent his son and they killed him also. And Jesus said, these guys are going to be a, to be a tough time. So that is God's kingdom way of thinking. And what we have been thinking by the church is two different things. But the good news is that church system has come to an end. <laughs> we are in a kingdom. We are entering into a kingdom era in our life, in your life. And that's where we are privileged and blessed by God to learn this. I wish I had this when I was a teenager or I was taught this in Sunday school. Oh my goodness. And the blessing is you are receiving it for free by God's grace. So receive it and teach others. At least we can raise up another generation who doesn't have to go through the mess, messes that we created or our previous generation created for us. Instead of waiting to escape this planet, let's fulfill our kingdom assignment God has given to us from the beginning of time and he will never change his mind. I guarantee you, God has not a plan B. He has plan A. But his method changes and his ways will change to get to that plan A because man is always trying to rebel against God's plan and his purpose. So God has to wait and to do something different to get man back to his point A again. <laughs> and that's what he's been doing. So I'm so blessed. Thank you so much. We are going to, so if you don't have any more comments or questions, I want to give the, the homework. Hope everybody has this book, maybe except Rakul. She hasn't received it yet. <laughs> Purpose, calling, and gifts. Wow, Joyce. Joyce, where are you joining from? Could you unmute? From Alito, Texas. Texas. Oh, wow. We have another friend from Texas. That's good. <laughs> I want to say that this makes so much sense. I am so blessed. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Nicole is from Texas, too. Yes, I, I am a Veritas patient. Oh, you are you are one of the uh, one of the patients there. Oh my goodness! So through them, I found you. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Nicole, <laughs> and thanks to Dr. Ben. <laughs> yes, for sending all of you to the Kingdom School. So God bless you, uh, Rachel. Please unmute there. I was thinking uh, how to apply this to people outside the church. You know, I, I was thinking in the beginning, uh, what about all those people that are not Christians, you know? But, but as far as we have come, uh, I find this being fundamental for, for all people. It is. Right? Or, it is. But, but the good news is, you know, the people in the world is already doing it. The church people need more yes. help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and people outside. That's my concern. My concern yes, is more yes. church people than outside the world because they are already doing it. People in the world yeah. are excelling in their field. Oh my goodness. That's true. Yeah. Every product yeah, that we buy, everything we shop for, somebody out there in the world made it. Every entertainment and everything. And the church people, mm. they're just waiting to escape. Yeah, I understand what you say. Yeah, so, yeah. So I'm looking forward to to uh, to go for to go for uh, deeper into all this. Yeah, yeah. 
We have to implement this about, in about, about the calling and gifts. That's very. I'm excited to to hear what you say about it. Really, it is very, 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 very good. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And we have an assignment. We have a job to do. That's what we are yes. here for. This Kingdom School in yeah. Denmark and what God wants to do there. Amen. So I thank yeah. God for very all. exciting. Enrique and Miriam yeah. and uh, there were other students there yesterday from Denmark. God, yeah, God a is whole bunch of people things. there. Yes, it's very exciting. Yes. God bless you. Okay, so, so on the on the book, you know, please read preface, introduction, and first five chapters of the book. Or before the next class, uh, preface, introduction, and the first five chapters of Purpose, Calling, and Gifts. And there was a second book that I recommended to for you to buy with this course. You know, three most important decisions of your book uh, of that book. I'm not putting a demand for you to read it because because it's too much. I want really to study this book, but that book is like a supplement. You can read it at your own leisure. But this is the one we are really following with this class. And please don't glimpse through it. I want you to take time because there are things in the book that I didn't share in the class. And there are things in the class that I don't share that is not in the book. So you need to both. <laughs> because we are always in a constant innovation. God is giving me more stuff. And I flow with him. That's the way I teach. Uh, I just flow with the Holy Spirit, whatever he gives me. And then if it is a substantial thing, then I go and make changes in the book. So six months from now, this book will be updated. There'll be more stuff to it. So that's the way kingdom operate. Kingdom is always expanding <laughs> and, and innovating. We never stop growing in God's kingdom. And we never stop thinking we know all things. No. After God giving me this 13 books on the kingdom, like I shared before, every morning I wake up, I feel like a little boy looking at the ocean when I think about God's kingdom. It's, it's unlimited, constantly expanding, growing. Um, that's the way our God is. The moment we stop growing, we'll end up in religion. Please don't do that. The moment we think that we know everything, we are stuck in religion. So let's pray for each other for God to make our purpose so clear to us. And you can see the pictures of everybody here. Somebody already left maybe, but that's okay. Uh, just bless each other for the Holy Spirit to make our purposes <clears throat> so clear to us. And you can unmute the microphone when we pray so we can hear each other. Uh, so just bless each other by name that you see on the screen. Father, I thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That we will all come into the thank you, Lord, for each of you. all your plans and purposes for our life, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for making a purpose. We can do the best. Calling and gifts that God has deposited in us. I bless them, Father, with your grace, with your anointing. Let the word that we heard today let take yes. roots deep into our hearts. In yes. Jesus' Amen. My holy name, Father, I thank you for using Amen. Father, to be the light of this world. Let your light shine, Father, and maximize the potential and the opportunity Amen. that you have given Amen. them. I bless them with peace today. 
to be at peace in their heart, in their soul, in their spirit, Amen. their body Amen. be at peace in Jesus' name. Amen. That, that they are at the right place at the right time. That's what God is saying, my friends. Amen. Amen. You are at the right Amen. place at the right time. Don't be anxious. Don't worry Amen. about what's going to happen tomorrow because it's not in our Amen. control. You are at the right place at the right time. Amen. Amen. And the best is yet to come. I'm not saying that just to say it. But you have to make some adjustments. You have to make some um, changes the way we think and operate. And that's going to take some time and effort. But it's possible. It is possible. So I bless you with that grace and peace and keep us in your prayers kingdom school the good news is kingdom school is growing all over yeah. and my dream is to see kingdom school established in every city town and nation on this planet earth so whenever you think of us pray for us that god will raise up more teachers who are trained to teach and uh, open doors and kingdom connections so this lesson will be uploaded to YouTube within 24 hours under mm. discovering, under DC, discovering purpose, calling and use, DPCG, uh, class B, lesson one, August 20th. That's the way it will be listed mm. on YouTube so you can find it. Um, so thank you so much. Stay blessed. Please don't thank forget you. the reading assignment. I will see you next week, same time, same place. And uh, yes, stay blessed. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.